Hi everybody, this is Andre. I have quite an exciting announcement today. Uh, I have Luma One here, uh, second batch production. It's available without any wait time. So it means that you place your order on the website deftaudio.com. Uh, it's being packed and shipped within the few days since you placed the order. Uh, domestic delivery is by the FedEx. International delivery is by, is by the FedEx International. So everything is simple. Uh, certainly the actual shipping charge uh, will be based on your location to the destination. We are based in Sacramento. Uh, you are feel free to come and pick up it in person if it's appropriate for you. So, uh, but what I want to talk today is one of the common questions from the uh, first batch uh, users uh, is what is actually the difference between the first batch and the second batch uh, Luma 1 production. I would say 98% uh, the, the, no difference. It's the same boards inside, same channels, same motherboards, uh, same other things. The firmware which is uh, available uh, for everybody from GitHub uh, is the same for the second and for the first batch. Again, no difference, it's universal across both of these. But the first thing that you can identify the uh, second batch units is with the additional USB host port that is here in front. And actually, this USB host port is in addition to another USB uh, MIDI port on the back. So uh, the USB MIDI port on the back you use to connect to your computer, to Mac or PC, doesn't really matter. Uh, and you use for the MIDI communication and for the data communication. The port in front is USB host, so it means you connect devices to this port. And like in that case, I have Akai DrumPod, and it's a MIDI class compliant device uh, that you connect directly. Of course, there's no drivers, there's nothing to install here, uh, but it acts as a MIDI controller to this. So uh, that is basically that simple. And all the information that's coming from this MIDI controller to this USB host port is also going back to the uh, DIN5 MIDI port and USB port. So if you, uh, it, Luma 1 is actually used as a pass through to your computer or to other sequencer con connected to the uh, DIN5 port. Uh, what the purpose of these, basically, in the long term, uh, we will add the capability for the built in sequencer, which is running on the LM1 uh, firmware, to record from the uh, USB port on the back, DIN5 port, and the USB host port. Today, because it's a, it's a dual processor architecture, right? So the LM1 code is running independently from everything else that's happening inside here, and that's why it's authentic LM1. Uh, today, it's not capturing any external media events. The only way you program the patterns is using the trigger buttons here. In future, we are looking at capability to make a hooks uh, to this to capture the uh, real-time events and translate it to the LM1 events. This is what's coming later. Uh, so that's how you identify. Uh, the other differences, uh, again, it's a, it's a purely cosmetical. There's not that much, uh, really. But this uh, switch on the back that's here used for the set opposition to the internal clock versus external clock, uh, well, uh, MIDI clock in that case, uh, has a different form, and in that case, it has an oval shape, so it's a, it's a better suited for uh, for this type of switch that goes up and down instead of a round hole that was in the first batch units. Everything else is the same, no changes, no differences. Now the question is, uh, and it it makes sense actually to ask this question: Can I modify my original uh, first batch uh, unit to add the capability for the USB host port? The short answer is yes, but it's a bit complicated. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show uh, what is actually needed in order to upgrade the first batch unit to the uh, second batch unit. Uh, the first thing that's very obvious here, that what can you do with this, right? What can you do with these cutoff, cutout for the uh, USB uh, A uh, uh, female port, right? And the recommendation that I have here for you, basically, this cut at the factory. So we are not doing that manually. So the enclosure is produced 
with a laser cut uh, holes for this mount. Uh, doing that yourself uh, maybe won't look good, uh, maybe won't look right uh, uh, for the just aesthetics of that. Uh, I propose that you will place this socket actually on a wooden panel because, first of all, it's much easier to work on the wood. And if somehow you screw up and do something wrong, you can always get another set of the wooden panels. Uh, well, there are some complexity with that too, but it's much easier than uh, dealing with the metal that is a quite thick metal on this, especially front panel here. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to open the loom inside. We will take a look what what is needed for routing of this port inside it. And that would be it. Uh, so that would be the upgrade procedure for the uh, first batch uh, Luma 1 customers. We are inside Luma. Take a look. What I did, I just removed the front lead, which is holding together the case with six screws here and uh, basically you unscrew, you take take out the lead and that's what you see when you get first into the Luma one. Uh, the things that you need to access in order to add the USB host functionality accessible from here. You don't need to go deep inside. It's a quite complex drum machine. There are so many things that could go wrong here and there are nine boards underneath, there's another board. So uh, there is a complexity. So let me turn it off and show you uh, how you can modify to add the USB host functionality. So first of all, let's ident identify the parts. The part that we need is here. It's the main processor of the, uh, of the extra Luma 1 functionality called Tinzi. Uh, it's off a shelf part and basically it's not soldered down, it sits inside the uh, socket here that you can carefully remove it. Again, be careful because it also has the SD card. So, uh, well, and don't try to force from the USB port and so on and so forth. Be careful when removing it, but it's not difficult to take it out. You see, it was very easy to me. What you see here basically is two cables connected. And this is second batch revision because one cable is a USB cable for the over MIDI and data and sample transferring functionality here on the back. This cable that's on top is the your, your USB host functionality. And it's basically, it's a breakout cable that goes to the female USB A slot. So everything off the shelf. So it's a standard breakout cable. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from eBay, from other sources. Uh, not a big deal. It's a standard pin, pin out for this. And, uh, it's connected to the header that is here on top of this uh, Tinsy controller. So this header, by default, is not soldered down. And uh, on the Rev1 unit, there is no cable, but also there is no header to connect to. So there are two options now. You can solder that header yourself. It's just a through hole, five pins uh, header that you place in, you solder it. Or you take the uh, component out, you ship it to us, to Sacramento, I will modify it for you and ship it back. Uh, you basically, you pay for shipping, no charge for any modification. So once you have a header, everything that comes later is straightforward. You just connect the cable following the pin orientation. So the red pin that is here, that is plus, plus five volts. So it's a, it's a facing towards to the USB port and you connect it. And this is how you get the USB host functionality. Uh, the firmware is universal, as I said, so once you update the firmware, everything will be uh, working right away for you. Uh, and of course, that's, uh, I have to mention that, that for ref, for first batch units, in order to work with USB host, it has to run the latest firmware because this functionality has been added just recently. This is it. So once you have it down, you place everything down and you, uh, you uh, well, put the enclosure back. Uh, the way that I proposed that you can place this uh, breakout cable, uh, you can cut the uh, wooden panel here, or again, in the worst case, you just simply can uh, uh, put it on the side and let this cable to hang here. And uh, again, that's up to you. That's how you can tolerate the aesthetics of that. And that's your own decision. We are not taking the orders for modifications. It, it basically makes no sense to us. 
and uh, this is a very minor change that introduces the USB host, so that's on your own. If you decide that it's critically important for you, it's quite an easy to do that. Uh, again, uh, with all our best, uh, we will continue developing of extra functionality to support for USB host, and it will be extra features added later. Thank you. So that's it that I wanted to tell you today, and thanks and see you next time. Goodbye.